Okay, <clears throat> so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you um, a very, very, very useful tool, and it's um, a usual function, and it's, re it's how to draw in object mode, okay, um, <clears throat> or it's similar to grouping. I mean, I think they're pretty much the same thing, but they can be used in different ways. Now, the whole idea of, of grouping is, uh, or object drawing is, is to, it's similar to the path function in uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, okay? So for example, yeah, so if I were to do something like this, okay, and then um, draw uh, an oval on top of it, like so. Now, by default, um, <clears throat> your settings are in merge mode, meaning I just drew this, I just draw this, um, I drew this uh, oval over the rectangle, but if I were to select it and move it, see it cuts away a part of that. Okay. Now, there are times when you're when you're working on stuff like a, a character, like I, I drew the eye right here, and I'll show you why I did that. And you may be working layer on, on top of layer and layer, so you may need something like this, and then you may need something on top of that, and then you may you know you may need something on top of that. You know, and then you may need something on top of that again, right? But you'd like to have the freedom to be able to move this, move it about without interrupting or interfering with the artwork below it, okay? Now, this can be pretty annoying. The only way to solve this without using grouping is to use different layers, okay? You can use, you know, put each one in a different layer and it won't interfere with the one below, it won't merge. Okay, there are other times you don't care, but a lot of times you really will, you, you'd really want to. Okay, now, <clears throat> how do you save yourself from all that aggravation? Well, uh, here's an example of something I didn't do in um, object mode. Okay, I just drew like a, a typical um, an eye, right? Now, the thing is, see, that's what happens. If I were to take uh, each part separately, it interferes with the rest. Okay? And it can get pretty messy if you want to make changes and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> how do you avoid that? Pretty simple. Now, whenever you select, say, a drawing, like a stroke tool, like the, um, the pencil tool, which is Y, or the line tool, which is N, or the uh, oval tool, or the rectangular tool, or the pen tool, all right? Um, <clears throat> you always get this little option. The snap tool, which shows like a magnet here, and the object drawing tool. Now this is what I'm talking about. Now, whenever you select any of these tools, you'll get this option. See, right now it's not selected. Now when I click on it, see it becomes darker so it shows that it's selected now if I'm to draw something see now that thing that I draw is not interfering with what's below see and I can move it at any point I can uh, uh, undo that function in other words make it a part of the other uh, artwork below it by choosing um, monitor break apart or on group Okay, they pretty much function the same way. Um, <clears throat> to ungroup, I would just shortcut Control B, and then now it becomes just a part of what's below it. See that? So if I were to undo that, and, and also you can combine things and just make them one group. Command G. All right, very very useful. It's similar to the path the path function in uh, Photoshop, well that's how I use it, because I use Flash primarily, but it's it functions like the path tool in uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, which allows you to draw things but keep it separated, and you can, you know, uh, do different things with it as you choose without interfering with the artwork below it, or even after it, okay? So, <clears throat> I'll show you how to use it just drawing that, the same eye that I just deleted. So, I select the Oval tool. Oh. Then I select object drawing tool, or you could just use J, okay? Shortcut J. 
See, by, by hitting J again, I deselected it. By hitting J, now I select it, all right? So let's make an oval. So this is going to be the white of the eye, right? So see the box automatically appears? That shows that it's a, uh, a group, okay? I'm in object drawing mode. So anything I draw above this will not interfere with it. And you can, it, you can go into it pretty much like a symbol. So when I double click on it, see, notice here you see scene and then drawing object. It means that now I'm inside the drawing object. Okay, and if I want to make further changes, I have to go back to scene and go out. All right, so I go in, delete the fill. Uh, let's make this a little bit thicker, maybe uh, four or uh, five. All right, cool. Now I go back out. Now <clears throat> let's draw the uh, iris. All right, you can make it like so. Right, and I'll actually make that make this a little thinner. Let's stick it three, and I'll change the fill to a uh, nice brown. Yeah, All right. I go back out. So now I have these two objects. These two um, objects here. So you select it, and then you move. And notice, even while this is selected, I can still move it um, behind this. You see that? It has a fill, all right? So, okay, actually, I'll actually show you the fill that it has by coloring the background or the stage. Let's make it a light gray. <clears throat> all right? So I go in. Actually, I didn't fill it. Good, there you go. All right? And now let's draw the uh, the pupil. And so so notice that you know I'm able to have the um. See, I'm able to control things, all right? <clears throat> and you can still manipulate it. See, I'm using the transform tool here. I can shrink it a little bit, you know, do stuff like that to it. But that's the, the cool thing is I can, you know, control it without it interfering with anything else. And then let's make a little highlight. You know, and it's really up to your style how you want to um, deal with that. You can make it um, you can make it oval. You can make it um, you know a circle. However you want to do it. <clears throat> All right. And there you go. And there you have a nice, cute little lie. And then <clears throat> I can further do this. So see that I have now, for example, this is a very cool and easy way of just drawing an eye, but using the same eye in different positions. So say, for example, instead of redrawing this for different positions, okay, you can, for your flash animations, you, if it, the character is looking up, you can just do like, do like this. You see what I'm saying? It's up to you to position and control it how you want. That's that's the cool thing about it. You know, you could do that. All right. So, <clears throat> and then this is the cool thing too. You can actually make say, for example, you know without a doubt. Okay, this will be, um, uh, you know, whatever. This this will remain the same. You can highlight all of them and then Command G and it makes this a group. See that? That's pretty cool. And then you can pretty much move this around however you choose, just like so. Well, you can still go in and change things. So nothing is necessarily fixed, okay? You can still go in and, uh, you know, change things around anyway. 
and, and, and basically, you can keep doing this. You can make even these two a group, okay? So you can make the highlight and the, um, and the black of the eye, the iris, the uh, pupil a group. It's up to you, all right? <clears throat> you can do it like that. It's pretty cool. And then finally, you can make this whole thing a group. So now you can have groups within groups within groups within groups. You know, you have many different layers of groups. It's, it's, one of, it's something that I use a lot, and I'm surprised I didn't do a tutorial on this first because it saves you a lot of headache because a lot of times, you know, see, and notice this is something you'd usually do on different layers. You know, I can do all of this stuff just on one layer, okay? And you can still go in and, um, and, and color things and change, you know, change things, manipulate it however you want from doing um, just by doing this. See, so this can enable you to do highly complicated artwork on one layer and then make that just, and then I could just make this one symbol, F8, and call it I, and that's it, all right? So even though this artwork is complicated, it's still only fixed to one layer, all right? And it's, it's something you can find, you know, I, I can't count the ways. Um, but it's it's very useful and I would, you know it's something you should be aware of as early as possible because it can save you a lot of headache and annoying uh, aggravation unnecessary aggravation and it can save you a lot of time. So there's one more thing that I wanted to show you guys really quickly, and it's how to uh, make copies of a group or anything. Um, you can just hold on Option. You select the thing, you hold on Option, you select it, and you just click and drag. That's it. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag while holding on Option. All right? I'll undo that. And um, another quick thing I wanted to show you too is that, okay, remember I made all of this a group. Now I can click into this, and here you have, okay, this as a group and that as a group. Now you can do this, and I'll just overlap it barely so you can see it. You can make, you can manipulate the arrangement of the groups, okay? So imagine this is behind, this is in front. You want to put this behind and this in front. You want to reverse the positions. If you want to reverse them or whatever, you just simply right-click, break apart, well, arrange. I'm sorry, right-click, arrange, and then here you have the option. Send to front, forward, backward, and so on. So backward just means, say you have nine layers of groups. If it's at layer 8, it will send it to layer 7, okay? Send to back means it will send it back to layer 1. Um, if it's forward, it will bring it to layer 10. And if it's the front and you have 20 layers, it will bring it to layer 20, right? So if I send it to back or backwards, it will go behind it, all right? So that's, that, you know, that gives you a lot of control and power as well because you're able to manipulate um, how they're positioned and, and so on and so forth. So that's something I would keep in mind um, in using because it's, it's very useful.